before we can talk about abnormal waveforms, we have to be intimately familiar with the normal waveform, each component of the normal waveform, and what cardiac events cause each component of the waveform. So let's start with the A wave, the first peak in the waveform. The A wave is caused by right atrial contraction. So obviously, as the atrium contracts, that's going to generate an increased pressure within the atrium, and that's going to be a positive wave in the waveform. That's the A wave. That's going to be a peak. When does right atrial contraction occur? It occurs at the end of diastole when the atrium is trying to squeeze that last bit of blood into the right ventricle. And it's important to orient yourself early on to the cardiac cycle here. At least it is for me. It's very helpful because now I can sort of use that to my advantage and I can go in order and just try to sort out and it helps me remember the next components of the waveform and what causes them. So we're in late diastole. Now we're in early systole. And what happens in early systole? Well, we have isovolumetric contraction where the ventricle doesn't quite mechanically contract yet, but the pressure builds up and that's gonna slam the tricuspid valve shut. And when the tricuspid valve slams shut, it bulges into the right atrium and that causes a little pressure blip known as a C wave. Now the C wave is not visible at the bedside. After early systole, we're in the middle of systole. And what's gonna happen after isovolumetric contraction? Well, now you have actual mechanical contraction. And when the ventricle contracts, it sort of, it squeezes and twists and contorts down towards the apex. And when it does that, it, it creates a mechanical event where it pulls the floor of the right atrium down towards the apex. And when that happens, it, it, it pulls the column of blood down. At the same time, the atrium has just contracted at, at the end of diastole, and now it needs to relax. So now uh, it, the atrium is relaxing, and that's going to cause the pressure to go down. So the combination of right atrial relaxation and mechanical ventricular contraction causes the X descent. Now we're in late systole and the atrium just relaxed. Why did it relax? Well, it relaxed because it needs to fill with blood again. So this whole thing can start back over. So uh, when uh, the RA begins to fill with blood, volume implies pressure. And as it's filling with blood, volume, uh, excuse me, pressure, volume and pressure go up and you get the V wave. Now we are, we're done with systole. Now we're back in early diastole. And uh, in early diastole, what's happening there? Well, the tricuspid valve springs open and now you have passive ventricular filling from the right atrium. And obviously, as the right atrium loses that volume of blood, pressure will also go down, and that's going to create the Y descent. It is critical to have, a, have an intimate understanding of the normal jugular venous waveform and the cardiac events that cause each component of the waveform. Let's revisit this video from earlier in the talk, which is a normal jugular venous pulse. And many people will tell you that you can't visualize the individual components of the waveform at the bedside. That's a, it's a whiteboard phenomenon and don't bother looking. Well, that's just simply not true. And this is a great example of that. So here we can see, and Joe has created this video where he's, where he's put the tracing over the top of the video and you can follow that cursor along. And I think all of us can at the very least appreciate the descents. And again, that's what's gonna catch your eye in the Venus waveform are the descents. So we've got X, Y, X, Y. And if I slow this down to quarter speed, here we go. So we've got A, X, V, Y. A, X, V, Y. So the descents will catch your eye. The, the peaks are, are somewhat passive, hard to, hard to notice. And, um, but you can absolutely see the, the individual components of the, of the waveform at the bedside. Here's another video with a trick uh, using a Q-tip to demonstrate the individual components of the waveform. And Joe has annotated this for us as well.